what's up? Ryan Florence here. I want to talk to you today about HTTP caching. What the heck is HTTP caching? And by the way, for the rest of this video, I'm going to mumble that word and I'm going to say HTTP caching. HTTP caching. HP caching. Let's just call it that. Hyper protocol instead of hypertext transfer protocol. Okay, so what the heck is a cache? A cache is just a spot to put stuff so that you don't have to go and get it later again. Uh, you either put it closer to the user or it's a calculation that you don't have to recalculate. You just hang on to the, 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 the result of your calculation so that next time you want to ask for that, you can just get it without calculating or without going somewhere and fetching it. So a cache is just a spot where we can put the end result of a calculation really close to the user. And in the case of browsers and HTTP caching, um, the browser can actually put that resource right there in the browser for them. Now this isn't service worker caches or any of that like new fancy stuff that the, that the cool kids talk about today. This is 25 year old technology. This is from HTTP 1.1. Uh, I was a teenager when this came out. Um, and some of you listening to this weren't even born. Oh man, I got some junk on my glasses. Nope, still a mess. Okay, we're gonna build a node server and uh, just to see all the little pieces of HTTP caching and how it works. So I'm gonna import um, create server from HTTP and let's make our server here, create server. Uh, this is gonna give us a request and a response. And I need to listen to this server right now or else I'm gonna to forget to do it later. And then um, let's do a little switch. We're gonna have two pages. So we're gonna switch on the request URL. And we're gonna say in the case that it is slash, um, we'll do one thing. And in the case that it is, uh, what's, what should we do, page one? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so I wanna make some HTML. We'll make a thing called like, create page and say it's the home page. And then here we'll create page and say it's page one. And then create page is just gonna be a function down here, like uh, uh, create page. We got a title in there. So we're, we're doing everything, everything from scratch. I don't want any magic going on. Nothing that Express does automatically for us. Like we just wanna see the raw, HTTP server and what it has to do to make all this caching work and, and, and how, it, how it all works. So um, we're even gonna be writing our own, our own little HTML page right here. So let's say do our doc type HTML, in uh, meta char set. So you don't have to have those quotes. You don't need to close this either. And when we're not in JSX, if it's just, oh, I need that in the head though. Um, when it's just HTML, we can, we can be free. Let's be free. All right. Um, what do I want here? I want a title. So I'll put my title in there and, uh, it's going to be complaining about the favicon thing. So I'm just going to point to remix runs just to not have that barking at us in the console. And then uh, let's put our, our title in here. Oop, messed that up. <laughs> um, you know what, I wanna put, let's put a, a navigation above this. Yeah, I guess we can put it, yeah, let's put it above. So I'm gonna have my links right here. So this is gonna link to the home page. Almost got it. And then this one's gonna link to page one. And then we'll have our title in there. And uh, then we can just close everything out. Actually optional in HTML, you don't have to do that, uh, but I'll do it anyway. Um, finally, I wanna do just like some junk in here because I want these requests to have some amount of weight to them because we're gonna be in the console looking at when it downloads and when it doesn't and stuff like that. So I'm gonna say read out from link, like a thousand of these and let's map them into just like stupid div I am junk and then join that junk okay so now I can make a page 
So let's send that response. So I'll say response and HTML, response and HTML for my two pages. Come over to the browser and uh, are we listening? Yeah, create server. Oh, about blank. I need to go to my actual server. Boom, okay, check this out. So we go to our network and let's see, we got a 200 status and you see that we downloaded 22 kilobytes. So our, all this junk is 22 kilobytes worth of junk. Click on page one, same thing, about the same size. And we can see that the, the text of the page is changing. So every time I click these, keep your eye over here on the size. As I click back and forth, you can see that we download 22 kilobytes every single time. Um, that's because we haven't specified any kind of caching whatsoever. Or so we thought. Browsers actually just kind of do some caching automatically. If I click the back button, oh, what does this say? Disk cache, one millisecond. So the browser, it doesn't care if our server configured cache headers or not. Um, if we click back and forward, it's saying, oh, you know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and cache this because uh, we're clicking back. Um, and I, I, think, I think that's a great feature of browsers. When you click back, you should see the page, whether the person who wrote the code configured caching or not. That's a really nice user experience that you get. Um, but we can tell the browser, knock it off. I don't want you caching that stuff. So the way that we do this is we set a header. So I'm going to say response. Um, set head and I'm going to say let's get a 200 in here that's our 200 response status and then we're going to say cache control no store so we're saying just don't even when they click the back button don't store this thing so let's uh, let's let's go all the way back back to page back to the home I'm going to hard reload this thing Oh, whoops, it's not set head, it's right head. Okay, so we downloaded. I'm gonna click page one, we downloaded. I'm gonna click home, we downloaded. I'm gonna click page one, we downloaded. Okay, so I said don't store the home page. But I did not say don't store page one. So I'm on page one, that means when I click back, what's gonna happen? We're going to go to the home page and we said don't store this thing. So this should not say disk cache. This should say 22 kilobytes. Hey, hey, look at that. Now I'm going to click back again and I'm going to go to page one. That should say disk cache because we didn't tell it not to cache things. So if I click back from the disk cache, exactly as we thought. So uh, let me go forward to the home page again and let's look at where this header comes in. So when I look at this res uh, response, you can see here, cache control, no store. So that, that tells the browser, don't use your cache here. So what, what else can we do? Um, well, we can tell it uh, to not just cache on back clicks, but we could tell it, hey, if you come back to this page, um, put it in the cache, but I want you to come and ask me first if, um, if it's changed or not. So we're gonna say our cache control is max age zero. So we're saying this expires the second you get it. We're gonna say must revalidate. We're gonna say come, come back to the server and, and find out if it's changed or not. And, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'm the server, I'll tell you if it's different than last time. And if it's, if it's, if it's not different, if it's the same, then you don't have to download it. You can just get it from your cache. So. Uh, let's, let's see how this all works. So the first thing I have to do is send this cache control header. Now this isn't going to be enough. So if I reload this and I click on the home page, it's downloading every single time I click it because I haven't, I haven't given it enough. All I said was, Hey, you can cache this, but I didn't give it a way to validate. So the way to validate this is I need to give it an E tag or an expire tag. Um, so I'm going to make a little thing called MD five here. And I'm going to MD5 the HTML. I'm going to turn this into a hash. So let's import create hash from crypto. I'm going to make my MD5 function right here. I'm going to return create hash um, MD5. I'm going to say update. 
with uh, the string, and then I'm going to say, um, yeah, shoot, I think it's digest hex. I'm going to have to look this one up. Yeah, we'll try it. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, that should be enough so far. Let's, let's see how far we get with that. See if I goof that up completely or not. Okay, I didn't goof it up at all. So this is kind of cool. We sent this cache control and we said, hey, here's the expire tag. This is a hash that represents what's inside of this page. So now the browser, when I click on home again, because I gave it a cache control and an e tag, the browser hangs onto this e tag and it's going to send it back to me when it clicks on the home page. So I just clicked on the home page and let's see what the request header had. If none match, you'll notice that's the same as the e tag that we sent. So when we send cache control and we send an expire tag to the browser, the browser hangs on to that expire tag for this URL for this localhost slash, and it just keeps that in, in its own disk cache. And then when we make a request to the same page again, we click the home page, the browser says, oh, hey, I've, I've been here before. I have an expire tag. I'll send that to the server. And then the server can be smart and tell me if I even need to download anything. Now, we aren't smart enough yet. We did a full 200 and we downloaded all, 220, all 22 kilobytes. So we need to do one more thing here. We need to say, all right, let's get our, let's get our E tag in here and let's MD5 our HTML before we send a response. And then we'll just send this E tag down. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, hang on, let me see something here. Let's see if our E tag is the same as the request headers E tag. Remember, cause the browser, or sorry, not E tag. Um, if none match. So you remember, because the browser sent us this if none match thing down here. Whoop. It said, hey, this is what I got last time. So we're saying, all right, well, let's, let's figure out this page again and let's create our hash and let's compare them. And if it's the same thing as last time, well, then we can say response right head 304. This is a, this is a um, uh, unchanged. Nothing's different about our, our response then we can just end it. I've been thinking about just ending things here. All right. So, so look at this code now. So we figure out the page, we figure out the E tag, we compare if they're the same, we don't even send a body. We just say 304, not modified. And then the browser is going to pull that out of its cache. So let's, let's watch this all in action. I'm going to hard reload here. So the first one that downloads all 22 kilobytes, I go to page one. Now when I click on home, what should happen? We should, the browser's gonna send this E tag. It should match ours. And so then we're just gonna get a 304 and not download anything. Oh, check it out. 304 not modified, only 90 bytes. We only transferred 90 bytes because all we had to do was send our headers. So we sent these request headers. Whoosh, um, we sent this if none match and it came back saying, oh yeah, that's not modified. So use the thing from the cache. And, uh, and so we do, we, the browser is going to pull that out of the cache and use it to turn to this page. So no matter how many times I click on this home page, it's not going to download that uh, whole file, not all 22 kilobytes, but page one, however, you can see is downloading all 22 kilobytes each time because we didn't set up all this cool stuff here. Okay. Well, we're still transferring 90 bytes over the network and we're still talking to the server. Is there a way to say, hey, for the next 10 seconds, don't even ask me if this is different. Just use your cache because I know this thing's not going to be different in the next 10 seconds. So here we can say max age 10 and then get rid of this must revalidate thing. So what we're saying is, hey browser, you can cache this for 10 seconds. So let's save it. I'm gonna reload over here. 
So we downloaded all 22 kilobytes. We can see our new header, header says uh, cache control max age 10. So this is good for 10 seconds. So if I click on uh, page one and then come back to home, look at that. It's a blurred out or a faded out 200 OK and it just came from the disk cache. Now if I keep clicking back and forth, eventually, oh, we got a, a 304. Our 10 seconds expired. But now if I come back again, it comes from the disk cache. At this point, I imagine our 10 seconds have expired. So if I click on home again, we should see a 304. And indeed we do. So the browser, every time it gets this request for this page, will just bring it from the disk until the expire time is up. In this case, it's super short, like 10 seconds. Um, we could do like an hour, right? Like 3,600. And now, It's going to come from the disk cache all day long. Not all day, all hour long. Now, if we wanted it all day long, I don't know, what's that? 3,600 all day, Winston. Uh, 3,600 times 24. All right. So that would cache it for a whole day. So that's how browser caching works with cache headers. So the question is, what does this mean for Remix? Well, Remix makes this super easy for you. Uh, let's say that we were in one of our route files. So you're in like route some file JS. Well, you just export a headers function out of your route, right? So right here we'd have like export default. Actually, let's just delete all this, get rid of all that noise. Um, function some route. So this thing is going to actually be like your JSX and stuff. Um, you just export a headers and you can return your cache control. You can say like max age. I don't know, maybe it's good for an hour. And uh, yeah, leave it at that. I guess I need to say function there. So we made it super easy. All of your routes can specify uh, all of their headers. Most importantly, your cache control. So each route can specify how long the browser should cache it. And as we'll learn in a video coming up soon, uh, what this all means for CDNs as well.